How does a spider weave its web? How can I switch on a light without plugging it in? And how do you get a pear in a bottle? can you cure someone of a really annoying habit? What a particularly irritating habit. Tell us how, Freddie, yeah, please. Yeah, well, we don't know anybody with any annoying habits, do we, Fred? I do. You. Mm -hmm. Precisely. 24 hours a day, he hums. How can you stop someone humming? Carol, to Gareth, please. Do you please. know the answer to this? I know the oh, answer. Oh, wonderful, Freddie. Put a your hand last. over Gareth's nose. Yes. And squeeze it. Yes. Yeah, Precisely. Oh. It works. Silence, you cannot hum if your nose is being squeezed. Mm -hmm. Try it, because <laughs> that's how to cure someone of a particularly annoying habit. Wonderful, Fred. Great. Now, how does it feel to be pregnant? Well, I had a little baby girl, Katie, last year, and when I was pregnant, I found that I was often very tired and very uncomfortable, even though it is a wonderful thing to be having a baby. But it's very difficult to explain to other people exactly how you're feeling. So to get over that problem, someone has come up with a wonderful device, one of these. Freddie, please now reveal what you've been wearing. This is called an empathy belly. And if you wear it, it will make you feel just how a pregnant lady feels. Now, how do you feel? I feel extremely uncomfortable, and I've had this thing on all day. Mm. Yeah, Fred, but you've got no stamina, have you? Would you like to uh, wear another one? Yes. That's one for you. We'll you put one on. It weighs an absolute ton. And if you would both like to come with me to the Vorderman Corporation Pregnancy Simulation Laboratory. Now then, Freddie, if yeah. you'd just like to lie down here. Oh, thank goodness for that. OK, now we're just going to do a few simple things that a pregnant lady would do during the day. Now, Gareth, yes. let's say that she'd just been shopping. There oh. we are. Yes. And uh, you just want to go up to the car park and you're on floor three. Right. Oh. You carry on there. Now, Freddie, just oh, a simple sad, thing. Yeah. Your shoelaces are undone. Yeah. Just uh, try and tie them, will you? I can't... No, you can't them. reach over this. It no. restricts your movement. Well, just roll off the bed onto your knees, trying to protect your back all the time against stress Oof. and strains. And uh, just Oof. get out. Oh, not easy, I want to go it? to the toilet. Do you? That's because the baby presses down on your bladder, which does make you want to go to the toilet quite a lot. Oh, yeah. just kick me as well. Did it? Well, there are some lead weights in here, in this empathy belly, and as you move around, they move around too. Oh. And when a baby's growing inside, it wants to exercise its muscles. It lashes out with arms and legs. Carol. And that can hurt at times, but it is a lovely feeling to know it's Carol. alive. Oh, is it yes? I'm exhausted. All right, you can come over here. That's very, very hard work. It is hard work because you're carrying around about 14 kilograms, around about 30 pounds towards the end of the pregnancy. Not just here, it's all around your hips and the legs I'm as well. I'm red hot. You're red hot? Well, the baby needs protecting, and it's protected by a lot of fluid inside. And that fluid obviously has to keep warm, has to keep the baby warm. And that heat passes through to the rest of your body. So that's why you do feel very hot, particularly in summer. But I can hardly breathe. I know, again, the baby's growing, taking up an awful lot of room. And that restricts the amount of space that your lungs can take up. So you can't take in really big breaths if that's what you want to do. <sighs> so after all this, and you've only been wearing it for a few hours, you just for a few minutes, next time you see a pregnant lady, will you help her carry her shopping? We will. Will you give her your seat on the bus? We, we will. will. And will you do anything she asks you to help her? Anything. anything. All right, good boys, you can go back now. Oh. And that is how it can feel when you're pregnant. It can feel tiring and uncomfortable. But you have to remember that it is a wonderful thing to be pregnant. And, of course, at the end of it all, you do end up with a lovely baby in your arms. But the empathy belly is one way of finding out how it can feel to be pregnant. How does a spider weave its web? Well, the man with the answer to this how is animal expert... David Manning. David, welcome back to How To. Hello. Um, now, before we find out how a spider actually weaves its web, can you tell me how come spiders don't get caught in their own webs? Well, spiders produce two main types of thread. There's the sticky and the non-sticky thread. And, of course, they're careful to avoid the sticky web. But even if they do happen to touch it, they have oily feet, most spiders, so they won't get stuck fast. 
So what is the, the thread that they make the web out of actually made up of? Well, it is a silk. Uh-huh. You can see here on Erica our tarantula. Hello, Erica. We have four. Now, at the back of the abdomen are the spinnerets. Uh -huh. And that's where the web emerges from. It's actually a liquid protein which solidifies in contact with the air. And I think yeah. you can just see Brilliant. the silk. So do all spiders weave exactly the same type of web and use it in the same way? No, there is a very standard form of web that we're all used to seeing, but there, there's a huge variety, as there are many different types of spiders. The Nephila spider here yeah. spins one of the largest webs in the world, up to, up to eight metres across. Eight metres across? Mm. What, are they trying to catch hippopotamuses <laughs> or something? <laughs> now, this is a more familiar spider to me. Yeah, this is the common house spider, and these do spin the more standard type of web. Do all spiders actually weave the same shape of web? No, there's, a, there's many very bizarre spiders, one of which is the web casting spider. Uh -huh. That actually spins a small net, really, holds it between four legs and will grab hold of insects. And do they all use the same pattern? No, but there is one basic formula. OK, let's weave a basic spider's web. I've got two sets of rope here. I'm going to be the spider. This green rope is my non-sticky thread. And the orange rope, David, is your not... very sticky thread. Right, OK, where do I start? Right, at the very top between those two branches, make a loop. OK, so presumably the spider would just That's drop right. and down. And then you drop right down to the centre. Yeah. Straight down to the next branch beneath straight you. Straight down to the next branch. And then you want to go around, around the edge. Around the And another spoke back into the centre. A spoke back out spoke again. Back out. Another spoke back into the centre. Back out again, creating yet another spoke. OK, back down here. And adjust your spinnerets and have some sticky web. Where do I start with the sticky right web? Right in the centre. Right, so I can walk along me non-sticky to the right. centre. And now just start making spirals in an anti-clockwise direction. OK, David, now what do I do? Rest your spinnerets. <laughs> let's hope something drops in for you to eat. Of course, if it lands on the sticky part, you should feel the vibrations. Ah, lovely. David, thank you very much for showing me how a spider weaves its web. And now I can have me lunch. Ooh. How do you get a pear in a bottle? Consider the impossibility. A pear, a bottle, how do you get one inside the other? Why would you want to? Well, you might, were you to be the manufacturer of this type of brandy. There you see it. Pear inside the bottle. An impossibility. How's it I've done? I've got an idea how it's done. Mm. They have a special bottle, uh, and it hasn't got a bottom to start with, and then they put the pear sort of inside that way and then they seal the bottom on after they've done it. It's very good, Carol, but it's wrong. <laughs> um, is, it, is it like a ship in a bottle, Fred? Do they, do they sort of build the pair up from a kit or something? It's very uh, good, Gareth, but of course they put the ship in absolutely flat and then they use cotton, don't they, to pull the masts and the yeah, rigging yeah. up. Yeah. Wouldn't really work with a pair, would it? <laughs> wrong. Pass it here, Fred. Pass it here. Is it, is it actually an optical illusion? Is it an ah. optical is, illusion? Is the shape of the bottle and, and the brandy inside making a lens, and actually the pear's nowhere near as big as it looks, and yes. small enough to get oh, through yes. that hole very in the top. Good. Yes. That is very good, good, Gareth. That yep. is very good That's the indeed. Answer. It's a pleasure working with someone so incredibly intelligent. That's very, really very clever. good indeed, Gareth. Absolutely uh. excellent. Uh but wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so, how did they get the pair inside yeah, there? How did they do it? Let me show you how, mm -hmm. shall I? What, in fact, they do is, when the pair is simply a little baby pair still growing, what they do is they push it inside the bottle and the pair actually grows inside the bottle. Yeah. And that's how they get a pair in a bottle. Now, how can I light a bulb without plugging it in. The well, first thing we have to do is look at what makes a bulb. Here we have a traditional bulb with a filament in the middle. Now, when you switch it on, that filament gets hot and starts to glow. As you put more electricity through, it gives off light. Over here, we have a completely different one. This is filled with a gas or a vapour. And as the electricity goes through that gas, it gives off light. And this is known as a fluorescent bulb. Now, Come with me to my fluorescing laboratory. Now, these are some very early fluorescent tubes, and if I put electricity through them, you can see that they glow rather prettily, but they don't really give off a lot of light. 
So, how have we gone from those to the modern day ones? Well, here is a modern day tube. Not uh, like you've ever seen it before because you can actually see inside. Now, when we switch this on, you can see that it gives off a sort of bluish light, but still, it's not glowing fantastically. So, how do we get from that to this, where it really is giving off a tremendous amount of light? Well, we have two problems with this. The first thing is that that bluish light is giving off a particular type of ultraviolet light and parts of that ultraviolet light are dangerous to the eye. The second problem is it's not glowing very much so how do we make it glow brilliantly like this one? Okay well let's think about glowing. Now down here we've got some chemicals which are called phosphors and when I switch on some ultraviolet light can see that they start to glow. Now, if you have a look at my back, you can see that there are fluorescent paints on my back, just like you have in the disco, and they're full of phosphors too. So they're reacting to the ultraviolet light. But the second problem is, of course, how do we block out the dangerous bits of ultraviolet radiation? Well, you can do that very simply by covering the phosphors with glass, blocking the ultraviolet, and that is how we can make fluorescent tubes safe by making them with glass, and secondly, making them glow a lot by putting phosphors around it. That's but Carol, mm. you said you could light it without plugging it in. Ah, yes, well, you can, because fluorescent tubes also have a very special property, is that when you put them in a, a place where there's a lot of static electricity, they start to glow. Now, here I've got a plasma globe, lots of static electricity surrounding that. Put the fluorescent tube next to it. Can you see? It's not plugged in, would you agree? Yeah. But it's coming up with these beautiful pink and green colours. And that is how I can light a bulb without plugging it in. Marvellous. How do you make a human kaleidoscope? If you've not seen a kaleidoscope before, where have you been? Marvellous toys, just hold them up to the light and you get this fantastic psychedelic pattern that will amuse people like me for hours on end. <laughs> um, it's easy to make a kaleidoscope. What you'll need, though, is to find mirrored card and you can get it from most stationers. Now, what you do is take your mirrored card, mark it up like so. So you've got two lines parallel down the middle, so it's divided into three equal parts. And then you need to score down those lines using a screwdriver very carefully so you don't cut yourself and don't go all the way through the card just do it so it breaks the surface like so and then you can bend your mirrored card into a mirror triangle shape which is the basis of all kaleidoscopy which i think is a word i've just made up now then <laughs> then um tape the whole thing up you'll need two triangles one for either end one that you can see light through and the other one that you can't um, then tape those on and fill fill it with bits of coloured paper like this perhaps more mirrored paper or even toffee wrappers bits of coloured paper anything that's bright and glamorous put those in there stick your bit on the top your triangle on the top and then wrap the whole thing in paper like that so it looks glamorous. And with your finished kaleidoscope, you then need to punch a hole in the end that you can't see light through like so. Hold it up to the light and you have built yourself a fantastic kaleidoscope. That's marvellous. Yes, but that. you said a human kaleidoscope. Yeah, that looks nothing like a human no. kaleidoscope. Oh, well, it? a human kaleidoscope is much the same as this, only slightly bigger. Come and have a look at this. Slightly because bigger. I've knocked up a human kaleidoscope That's for you. just a bit of wood. It's not human. Not it's human big, all, but it's right? not human. Well, the human element yeah. are the bits, because the bits in the kaleidoscope are going to be made up of us three. Come on, get underneath. <laughs> oh. Oh, right. Oh. Right. Oh. Now then, everybody in position? Oh, yes. yes. Right, OK. Lift your feet off the ground, because right. we're going to start turning around. Hey, wait a minute. Look at that. Hey! Right? Hey! Oh. Hey. Oh. Oh. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. That's very good, Fred. <laughs> which one's the real you, Fred, and which one's the mirror? That's me there. No, it isn't. That's me. Oh, is it? I'm the better-looking one. <laughs> that's oh. how you make a human kaleidoscope. And that's how... Handle no, it's mine. Will your fingernails need cutting? <laughs>